Today, we are going to discuss about practice occupational health and safety. After going through this module, you are expected to clarify and explain regulations and workplace safety and hazard control practices and procedures and identify hazards, risks in the workplace and their corresponding indicator. Lesson number one, practice occupational health and safety. Occupational safety and standards or OHS refers to the health and safety of the workers in the workplace. It also includes the law standards and programs that focuses on making the workplace better for the workplace, clients, and other stakeholders. Selecting an appropriate control is not easy. It often involves doing a risk assessment to evaluate and prioritize the hazards and risks. Any potential or unusual situations must be studied and improve companies' occupational safety and health standards, ensure better service, good business, and enhance employees' morale. Every program should be studied and specially designed to suit the needs of the individual workplace. Working may be an occupational hazard to you. Not working is an occupational hazard to the country. By 12 Eustans, Chapter 8, Verse 5. Next is Hazards and Risk Identification and Control. Safety of individual is a concern of everybody in business, of course. The building establishment, the workers, and all the clients should be at safe all times. Maintenance of cleanliness and order lines with the provision of standard procedures should be practiced and monitored regularly. Hazards and risks should be identified as early as possible. And hazard is any source of potential danger, damage, harm, or threat. While there is a chance or probability that hazard will actually cause harm. Number 1. Electrical hazards. The building establishment installed more electrical wiring that is highly needed to provide quality service to its daily guests. They also use several, several electrical tools and equipment such as computer set, telephone, and fax machine for the office and refrigerator, freezer, coffee maker, blender, and oven for the kitchen use. The hotel staff should be careful using the equipment to avoid the danger of electrocution. Utmost care and caution at all times should be remembered. An electrical hazard includes a. Defective tools and equipment, all tools, equipment, all tools, equipment, and appliances. Use in the workstations should be passed on quality control and with good standards. Letter B. Faculty electrical wiring. Improper electrical wiring is one of the common risks in any establishment. Provision of wiring safety regulations has been administered by the local government to reduce this type of hazard. Regular check-up and monitoring of electrical wiring and all its equipment and appliances should be habit. Next is overload circuit. Happens when the circuit current than what is expected which may be cause electrocution or fire. The next is worn out wire. Happens when the cord of any electrical wires out and uncovers the electrical cables inside due to damage caused by pets. Number 2. Chemical hazards. Common materials such as cleaning products, paints, fuels, and other inflammables contain hazardous chemicals. This can lead to skin and respiratory disorders, poisoning, or even death when inhaled or digested. Combustible and cleaning and sanitation materials are two common classification of these hazards, which greatly affects the health of individual. Number three, biological hazards and biohazard. This includes board blood and other body fluids, bacteria, viruses, from dry molds, animal bite, and human and animal waste. In hotel industries, specifically in kitchen and dining area, the food that they serve as easily affected by hazards 
If not properly handled during preparation time, it will be contaminated which can cause foodborne illness or worse will be food poisoning. Meat and poultry fruits and vegetables, humans and animals are some sources of this type of hazards. These are carriers, carriers of bacteria which should not be neglected because of its great impact to individual impact to individuals. Number four, physical hazards. This includes unsafe conditions that can cause injury, illness, or even death. It is considered as the most common and present type of hazards in the most workplace. Spills on floor or tripping hazards such as block aisle or cords running across the floor is an example that usually happen in the work stations which in turn result to this type of hazard. Number 5. Ergonomic Hazards This occur when the type of work, body positioning, and working condition puts strain on your body. It can be a short or long-term exposure, which may result to moderate or serious injuries. It includes poor lightning, frequent lifting or posture, repeated movements and long exposure, with the use of computer, poor work practice create hazards, but regular workplace inspections prevent them. They minimize it if not totally eliminate work related injuries and illness. Workers should well inform about the presence of hazards, well trained about the proper handling of hazard to keep them prepared for any contingency. So here are some ways to control hazards. Number one, use of personal protective equipment. Number two, implementation of engineering or engineering controls. Number three, implementing administrative controls, which invo involve work schedules, policies, and practices including education and training good housekeeping and emergency preparedness number four elimination or removal or hazards from the workplace organizational safety and health protocol contingency measures and procedures a contingency plan or otherwise known as worst scenario or backup plan on the disaster recovery plan is a simply secondary alternative course or action that can be implemented in the event that the primary approach so as to function as it is should. It indicates a written emergency plan of procedures that merely prescribes course of action that must be taken effectively to reduce and minimize the cause of hazards from any kind of risk. It will be systematic and procedural approach that will be effectively identify what goes wrong in a situation. Effective plan strategies and approaches it the first and foremost consideration in this procedure in developing a contingency plan has the following factors should be considered. Number one, events that may occur the recur response. Number two, disaster that may be happened during the implementation of the plan. Number three, possible scenario for the situation. Number four, the worst case scenario. Number five, possible scenario if costs of the plan are excessive or if there are delays. Number six, events that may cause much disruption of current activities and plans. Number seven, possible scenario if K people leave the organization. Number eight, expected moves opponent and competitor. Number nine, possible hindrance, hindrances in the implementation of the plan. A contingency plan should include number one, an updated and correct list of names, addresses, and a phone numbers of all persons who are expert and qualified to help in a case of an emergency. Number two, an updated list of all emergency equipment and facilities that can be used in emergency situation. Number three, a list of proper procedures to be followed by person personnel in an urgent situation in response to hazards. 
and risk that may be encountered. Number four, a detailed agreement of qualified personnel such as firefighters, police officers, nurses, contractors, and all other response teams. A ready plan for evacuation, isolation, or decontamination to save people and proper property for further damage. Safety and health consciousness. Fires, earthquake, and other disasters are reality. It can happen anywhere or anytime. They are not predictable. That's why everyone should have an accurate knowledge on how to respond, whether at home, at workplace, or while on the road. Emergency preparedness is one of the good answers in these natural and man-made problems. It must be become a way of life. Being ready at all times is a topmost priority. Remember that quality of life depends on how ready and prepared we are. The following are some of the natural and man-made problems. Fire. This is one of the major hazards that may happen to all hotel establishments if safety and security is being ignored. Many hotels share the human error has been the major reason of a kind of accident. Delayed action of the fire department, hotel guests, and even uncorrected habits in electrical, cigarettes on mattress, and the like greatly contribute to like dilemma. Fire safety and prevention is the answer to make employees, especially the hotel guests, safe and secured on the entire date of their stay in the hotel. It includes a fire response such as putting up a fire emergency plan and giving a proper orientation for hotel facilities, fire and life safety systems. Fire Preventation Tips If fire begins in your room, report it to a hotel operator immediately, and then try to put it out. If you're sure you can handle it, if in doubt, get out of your room, and close the door behind you to keep smoke and flames out of the corridor. Pull the manual alarm to alert your neighbors. Meanwhile, if happens in another part of the building, you will probably be alerted by an alarm, yelling in the corridor, a phone call, or the sound of the engines. During fire, 1. Pull the nearest alarm or call an emergency number for help. Number 2. Stay calm, do not panic. Number 3. Evacuate. After fire, 1. Stay out, do not go back inside the area of incident for any reason. Number two, talk to the department if there is anyone who's still trapped in the place. Number three, go back to the place if it's safe to do so advised by the fire officials. Following are some of the actions that the first aider must do in case of emergency. Provide an immediate action carefully. First aider should possess a desirable quality for effective assistance. Number two, position the victim in correct posture. Tom provide proper aid and assistance. Number three, assess and evaluate the incidents. Examine if the victims have injuries. Number four, plan a good action and careful action to be done. Number five, seek for an expert after giving immediate medical assistance to the victim. And the next is earthquake. Earthquake is the sudden or violent shaking and vibration of the surface of the earth resulting from underground movement along fault plane from volcanic actions. Safety tips during earthquake indoors number one stay inside the building number two identify the safe area in each room such as tables, desk, or against inside the walls. Number three, avoid the dangerous spots such as windows, mirrors, hanging objects, and all furniture. Next is outdoors. Number one, stay within a clear area far from trees, high-rise building, poles, and electrical wires. Number two, 
stay away from these play shelves with objects that could fall. Number three, secure yourself from glass falling objects and other debris. Next is after earthquake. Number one, check personal safety and security. Number two, seek first aid if needed. Be calm. Number three, stay out of the damaged buildings. The last is first aid. First aid is an assistance, help, and care given to a sick or injured person before a full medical treatment is given by a professional. It is usually performed by the first aider who is usually non-expert but knowledgeable in doing so. So, that's all for today. Thank you and God bless. I hope you learned something about practice occupational health and safety.